the in team. the building. Perhaps the greatest running back in the history of the U. I got one even better than that. The most feared running back right now in the National Football League. A man who eats pain like Captain Crunch cereal. <laughs> a man who had more comebacks than Muhammad Ali. Who got spare eyes on the sideline. <laughs> Give me my eye! <laughs> I'm back in, coach. Yes, Willis McGahee joins us on the Big Fat Morning Show. Willis, welcome, man. How you doing, man? Man, how you doing is the question. I'm all right. You know, I can't complain. I'm hanging in there. So, Willis, okay. I was telling Sanjay your your story back in you know and he's back in the day me. this morning because you know she's a fan Raven fan yeah and a fan of the U but she didn't know the all the the whole scoop she didn't know the whole story comeback said, kid he's a comeback I kid I said I was telling I was telling her that Willis McGahee was perhaps the greatest running back in the history of the U and your devastating knee injury many yeah. people didn't think you were ever gonna. Uh, walk normally, let alone play football. When you, when, when you were laying out there on that field, there were a lot of people, I'd say at least over half of the people watching, mm -hmm. in their minds felt like this guy would not play in the league. And not only did you play in the league, you came back to be a dominant running back, and here you are with the Ravens, man. So let me just say, first of all, shout out to your heart and those guts. Boy, them guts! <laughs> the game got them guts! Got them guts, baby. Got them guts, son! So, Willis, as a star... You see, Put us inside. You are a superstar at the U. Then you get injured. Tell us your your highest moment in college and your lowest. Well, my highest moment in college was, you know, coming to that last game of my college year. And, you know, it was like projected to go number two overall pick in the draft right behind Carson Palmer. And you know what, man? It was like I'm feeling on top of the world. And I had this little gut feeling about the last game, you know, we playing against Ohio State, like, this season been going too perfect for you. You know, you had 200 yard games, you leading the NCAA in touchdowns, 27 touchdowns, tying uh, Barry Sanders and, uh, and Thurman Thomas record in touchdowns. So, you know, all right. So, when it's time game week, I'm just getting this feeling like, man, something gonna happen. You're gonna get hurt or something. It was just like, I went out there, you know, started playing, and I was just trying to get through, you know, like, okay, get through. But then we started losing. And, you know, my teammates looked at me like, man, what's going on? We need to do something. I'm like, all right, you know what? It is what it is. And just as soon as I started cranking up, got hit right in the knee, and it was over from there. Man, so did you feel, what did you feel in that moment? Were you like, all the dreams are gone? Or? Uh, you know what? When I was laying on the ground, you know, Dr. Reeby came up, checked the knee. He didn't even say anything. He just like, just shook his head and I went into tears right then and then. It was like, I didn't even want to be out there anymore, man. You know, it was like, it was devastating. You know, just one minute you're on top, next minute you're back at the bottom. So then when you started training like Rocky to come back, <laughs> when did you feel like, you know what, I might be able to, wait a minute, this knee don't feel too bad. I might be, put a little weight on it, okay? I might be get nice again. Well, the good thing about it, the doctor told me, you know, I would be able to play again. You know, it just depends on how well I rehab. And, you know, I had surgery like two days later. You know, technically people got surgery two weeks later. But he got me right in there. And we went from there. And I was rehabbing the next day out of surgery. Hmm. And that was the most painful thing I've been through in my life. It was like the uh, therapist came in there. And, you know, he was like, come on, man. You got to lift your leg. You got to bend it. And my first lift and bend. It was just painful and tears rolling down my eyes. I got the whole room crying, my family in there watching, and it was like, you know what? Only I'm gonna get back if I if I just if I just buckle up and do it. And Who was your rock? Me. Who was your rock? Who was like, listen, come on, let's get up, let's do this. Well, we gonna get through this. My family, you know, my mom, my uncles, my cousins, it was everybody was there. You know, I was never alone when I went to rehab. It was somebody coming, regardless of who it was. When did you feel like you were like back? I didn't feel like I was back until like two years ago. Really? Two years ago. Yeah. Wow. Because you know, it was like when I when I when I came back and I started playing, it was always that doubt in my mind like I can't really bend the leg all the way, but I can get through it. And you know, it, it it didn't it didn't kick in until like two years ago. Willis McGay, he joined us live in the Big Fat Did Morning you Show. Question or comment for Willis? Hey Willis. 
What's up? Oh, God. <laughs> hey, how's it going, buddy? It's the heckler. It's feeling pretty good. Hey, I just want to commend you on being such a crybaby, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 <laughs> All right, Heckler, hey, leave him alone, man. <laughs> man. Let me call on the show. Man, I've been pretty humble, man. We got one of the few teams that, you know, we got a couple of rookies that are coming in and, and actually are doing good work, but I never see you pouting like Terrell Owens. Or I never hear you beefing. You, you, in fact, are hard on yourself. Now, do you think because you had to rehab and come a long way to come back in the league the way you did, it made you a more humble person, or were you always that humble person? Uh, no, nah, I wasn't always a humble person. So, <laughs> what? Injury, Wait a minute. Like us. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, before that injury, I had the biggest head in the world, man. You know, so, really? Yeah, but that injury really, you know, made me look at life in a different way. You can't really go around being like that. Do you think the environment at a school like the U encourages you to have the hugest ego oh, in the world? Oh, yeah. you, you, you got the best players. Right? You, yeah, you had to be cocky at the University of Miami. That's, that's, that's how we were taught, you know, one man. Like, look at the running backs we had when I came in. It was James Jackson, Nigel Davenport, Clint Poison, and Jared Payton. I was last on the list, you know what I mean? It was like, once you get the turn, you got to seize the moment. And I got my turn, so I seized the moment and never looked back. So what happened in Buffalo? Is there is there bad blood there, or it's all rectified? Uh, you know what? It's, it's, uh, it's up in the air, man. You know, it, it's a little bad blood, but it's not. You know, I really didn't have nothing against the people in Buffalo. My teammates, anything like that. It was just one little comment that got blown out of proportion. And, you know. Well, it's nobody from Buffalo can hear you. Go ahead. You can talk about it. <laughs> I, I made a comment in a, a magazine saying, you know, Buffalo should move to Toronto. Because, you know, I'm from Miami, so, you know, Buffalo is a little, a little laid back town. It wasn't really speedy like Miami. And I was like, you know, I like Toronto. So I was like, Buffalo should be moved to Toronto. You know, it'll be it'll be better. So you was at the clubs like, ain't no bottles? <laughs> I ain't got no bottles in there. I'm used to bottles. Who's <laughs> these plastic cups? Now, how, does that, how do y'all get along? How does that work when somebody, like a vet, comes into a veteran team, and you're a vet in the league? I mean, how does that all, does it kind of like take a minute for everybody to adjust to each other's personality? No, nah, you know, one thing about the Ravens, you know, they're going to accept you once you come in because, you know, they're they trying to bring in the best guys that are around the league. And, you know, we... we we collaborated real good, you know, it worked out for the best for all of us. Sunday, good, good stock answer there, Will. you and the coach, <laughs> what, what, is, what is the score Sunday? What is the score Sunday? We will win. You know, we do, man. You know, we, we've we been whooping these teams all the way to the last minute. I know, man! You know, just, I don't know what's going on. Like, if, I, if I knew what was going on, I'd tell you. Thanks to Q, hello. Hello? Hello. Hey, got a, com- got a comment or question for, for Willis? Yeah, question for Willis. Um, my question to Willis, what's up, Willis? What's up, boss? My question to you is, um, what other team in the NFL would you be happy with uh, playing for? I'm fine right where I'm at, man. Yeah, my next question is, um, between your two backup running backs, which one do you think is, um, which one would you be more happy with taking your place if you, if you happen to go down again? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't duck it, answer it. Don't duck it, answer it. You, know, like, I don't it. Duck it. you know what I mean? Don't duck it. Technically, LeRon is a fullback. Ray Rice is a running back. They drafted Ray Rice to be my backup. You know, regardless, I don't think it's no drop off, but I'm pretty sure that people want to see LeRon back there because he's moving the Anytime ball. Anytime you want to come yeah. through, man. Willis McGee, he's joining us. Anytime, man. Anytime. Anytime, people, man. Anytime. Kind of, kind of the ladies didn't chime in. Y'all don't think you're sexy, what you look like, Willis. Hey, what, what you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> Come out to a club or something, you know. Well, like, you know what? Go I'm to a fish fry. Y'all be at some club in Columbia? Yeah, man. Uh-huh, send yeah. a shout out. No, 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 Where you want to be, son, is at the water cantina with me. That part about the end. Hey, shut up. Hey, yo. Yeah. Oh, we gonna have a talk. Well, well listen, anytime you want to join us, we're always there every Friday. Pork chop, uh, I mean, if you like dancing is. with old ladies, I mean, that's your people. cup of tea. Look them up. You're 47. You want to dance with her? Or you want to dance with girls look like Sanjay? Yeah. yeah. It's up to you. Oh, there you go. I'll see you Friday yeah, at the yeah. Guana Cantina. Any shout outs? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, shout outs, man, you want to put out there, man. Uh, of course, your team. We Say got something to Baltimore. You no, know, I, I appreciate Baltimore for allowing me to come in, you know, be their running back. They embrace me real good, and I love it here. You know, I, I, I don't plan on going anywhere. Awesome. That's what's up. Willis McGahee joining us on the Big Fat Warning Show. That's what's show up. On 92Q.